Welcome to PSD to HTML5 and CSS3. This video is called Layout, Styling the Navigation. What we're gonna be primarily focusing on in this video is using CSS3 to style the navigation menu of our website. So this section up here with the logo and the three navigation menu items. Currently in our website, we have no layout whatsoever. Uh, it's just top to bottom content. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start making the site look more like this. Just as a note, uh, we can see here that the website is centered in the middle of the browser. And this effect is quite easy to achieve. Uh, it's really only a few lines of code. Um, but what makes it a little bit uh, more complicated Hardly though is the uh, this you see these colors here the black extends from one edge of the browser window to the other edge same with the blue and down here as well this gray and this dark gray uh, but the content within it is centered so this section is centered and same with this and so on and so forth so in order to achieve this uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit of extra markup within our HTML file. So if we navigate ourselves to our index.html file, we're gonna to wanna to focus in here uh, in the header section. Right now, the nav is our primary focus, so we're gonna consider this section, uh, the nav. Even though this says nav, we're gonna really be focusing on the black bar in the design, so this whole section right here. So the logo, and the navigation menu. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is wrap um, a div around this section. So we're gonna add some more con uh, HTML. So add a div here, close it here. Let's uh, indent this so we can see the hierarchy. And this div is gonna have the class of container. And we're gonna use the class of container because we're going to be using this uh, div all throughout our HTML. And what container is going to do is it's going to center whatever is wrapped in that div in the middle of the browser. So this section is now wrapped in container. We'll also wrap this section in container, this in container, and so on and so forth. And the way that we can do that is by going to our CSS and under our layout section let's select the container that's how you select a class and we're going to give it a width it has a fixed width and we can find out what the width is by going to our Photoshop file and finding out how wide this content is and that's very easy we're gonna turn on the guides so we can see how wide the website really is. So I'm going to use the marquee tool and I'm going to select just any section from there all the way over to here and I'm going to click on the info button and that lets me know that this is 960 pixels wide. That's uh, a really common width. This is a 960 pixel uh, grid. Um, and it's very common to design websites in this, uh, in this width. So that's what we're going to be using. But you can see here that these little gutters are 10 pixels. So that technically means the content is 940 pixels wide, I believe. There we go. 940 pixels wide is how wide the content is. And then there are 10 pixel gutters on each side. So how we're going to achieve this effect is by going in here and giving container width of 940 pixels and uh, padding of zero pixels on the top and bottom and 10 pixels on the left and right. Remember how we covered this in a previous video where this is a shorthand for writing this. Instead of uh, wasting typing and energy on doing this, 
zero pixels, 10 pixels. This means top and bottom, this means left and right. So we want left and right to have 10 pixels of padding. All this is gonna do right now is just give this section up here a width and you won't even see it because there's no background, you can't even see it. So if I were to give, uh, let's just see here. You won't actually, let's not uh, save this as, we're not actually gonna be using this, but uh, just to give you an idea of what's happening. I'm gonna give this a background of black and you'll see this is the header section and the container within the header section, let's give this pink. There you go. So this looks really ugly right now, but all this is doing is just showing you that this whole black section is header and this section is the container that's wrapped around that, uh, this section up here. And you can see that that's 940 pixels wide plus 10 pixels of padding on each side, which makes it 960 pixels wide. So let's take out those ugly colors. And the way we're gonna center that content in container is by going margin zero for top and bottom and auto for left and right. Another way of writing this would be this, but you can see that that's kind of redundant. So zero pixels for top and bottom, auto for left and right. What auto is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that the margin on the left side of the container is exactly the same as the margin on the right side of the container, which gives the effect of it being centered. So this looks funny right now, but if I were to do the same thing and say this background was pink, there it is. You can see it's centered in the middle of the browser. And if I were to move this, it stays centered no matter how, how big you make the browser window. So let's get rid of that pink. Uh, that's all we're gonna do for container right now. Uh, it'll all start coming together. You'll see. Next up, what we're gonna do is within the layout, we're gonna continue on down here and let's select the header and give it the background of black. And we wrote up here what black was. So we can copy and paste that. That's black. Uh, just a little uh, web design tip. If a color code is six of the same number, you can use a shorthand uh, version of it by only putting three of them. So when you see three of the same number, that it's gonna be converting that to this. So instead of writing six zeros or six Fs or six Cs or six threes, you can write three and your uh, browser will render that as the, the full color code. So we're gonna from now on use the shorthand version. So that is black. So the header is black, the entire header is black. Okay. Now let's for uh, our eyes sake, this kind of looks ugly and it's kind of hard to work with. So let's, let's just give the color to this section right here, uh, right away, which is the hero section. So let's select that, the idea of hero, and let's give it the background of, uh, I believe it was light blue. So here's light blue, copy that, paste it. There's light blue and the color, um, there we go, the color is now blue. So you can see kind of where we're going here. So now let's tighten this up up here and make this look exactly like this. So we can do that by Let's go back here under the header style and we're going to select the logo. So the ID of logo selects the logo div and it's gonna have a margin top. You can select uh, a specific margin as opposed to just writing margin and then writing all of them in here. Uh, you can just write one of them. So margin top, margin right, margin bottom, margin left. The top margin on here 
we go back to our design, you can see that it's not at the very top of the browser. It's actually got some sort of, you know, uh, it's got a margin here. So let's find out roughly what this is. And it looks like the height's uh, around 12 to 14. So let's go margin top 12 pixels. So let's go back to our website. And that's not working, probably because we didn't, um, I must be missing something. So here's a, let's just see what's happening here. Okay, that's not right. Do a little fix here. This is all part of web development. It's uh, you're going to come across bugs and certain things are going to work. Uh, and just from experience and from doing it over and over again and doing some research, um, fixing bugs will come will come easy. So let's just see if this fixed. OK. All right. So what happened here was I gave the logo. Uh, I made the display block and I gave it padding as opposed to margin. What block is? There are two types, uh, two main, main types of elements in HTML and CSS. There is a block level element and there is an inline level element. Uh, super brief rundown. Uh, block level element. Let me show you here. Uh, let's give this a border. Maybe this will help explain. It's gonna have a red border. Okay, this is a block level element. Think of a block level element as something that spans the entire width of its uh, parent element. So this, uh, its parent level element is the full width of the container and a block just fills the entire thing and nothing can rest beside it on the left or on the right. It's just its own section. It takes an entire block of the site. Whereas an inline element is just the width of the element itself, um, allowing things to be able to float up to the side and uh, images and links like this right here and these are inline level elements. Um, sorry, actually images are block level elements. Uh, that was my mistake. Links are inline level elements. Things like um, headers and paragraphs um, divs and a bunch of other elements uh, are block level elements. So inline is this block is a full width. So just as a little bug fix, I changed because this is an a tag, which is a link, which is an inline element. I wanted it to be um, a block level element. So I changed it to display block and gave it padding top of 12 pixels. So now that's correct. There we go. Uh, what we're gonna want to do now is take our navigation right here and we wanna bring it up to the side right here. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a few things here. Remember how I said we're going to be copying and doing some more of these comments? That's right now. So in under here, I'm going to add a new section called navigation. And I'm going to use this to style the navigation section of our website. So let's select the nav and the unordered list within the nav. So this is saying uh, nav and then select the UL within the nav. So you can see here in our HTML, I'm selecting this and then I'm selecting its child by writing this, nav UL. And I'm gonna make the margin zero. I'm gonna make the padding zero. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, so I tightened that up a little bit. Um, now I'm going to select the nav ULLI. So now I'm doing even more of a descendant selector. I'm selecting the nav, its child the UL, and its child the LI, or all of the LI elements. 
list style none i don't want those dots those bullets let's see what that looks like all right so that's gone but now i want these need to be side by side they need to be up beside each other like this so let's do that um that is going to be float left okay so it's starting to look a little messy here but we'll clean this up uh, if you're not familiar with floats um, it's kind of a bizarre concept to figure out at first but once you um, once you do it and you practice it and you kind of figure it out it's it's a fairly easy concept so I already have this pulled up here uh, all about floats you can go to css-tricks.com slash all dash about dash floats and it will tell you all about it. I'm not going to do it in this video because it will take forever. Uh, you can just read through it and it explains very uh, precisely and um, well how floats work. So you can navigate yourself there, brush up on floats if you don't, um, if you don't understand them and uh, come right back to this video. So let's continue on. We want this to be up here now. We don't want it down here. So let's take the nav UL and float that to the right. Okay, we're almost there. It's not quite there because it's just sitting down here. We want it actually to be within this bar. So what we're going to do is go to logo. And logo is actually going to be Uh, logo is going to be floated to the left and what that's going to allow us to do is okay we're getting there trust me I know this looks awful but it's gonna it's gonna work out great uh, the reason why this is happening you don't even see the black bar anymore is because the container element is collapsing uh, because this is floated and this is floated uh, the positioning is kind of right but the parent collapsed um, it doesn't see that it has a height anymore so the way that we can fix that is by using the what's called the clear fix so you can do that by going down to your global styles section and let's add a new CSS so uh, selector here called clear fix and we're going to do a little CSS uh, wizardry here so just follow along Okay, so I know this looks like a bunch of mumbo jumbo and I'm not gonna explain uh, how it works. What you can do is just look up, um, again, under CSS tricks, you can search for um, clear fix and it will explain uh, in detail how the clear fix works. Here we go. explains uh, how the clear fix works and if you really are interested um, you can look into it here but we're not going to cover that right now and now we need to give the container element this clear fix um, style uh, class so let's go to container and let's give another class here called clear fix and that's going to give container these styles so now let's see what happens there we go this looks much better so now that we're getting a little closer, let's uh, do a few more things here. This doesn't quite look right, uh, and that looks awful still. So let's fix this padding around here. Let's go back to logo, 
let's actually change this from padding top to just padding. 12 pixels on top and bottom, zero on left and right. That looks a little bit better, maybe a little bit more. Let's say 15 on top and bottom. It's pretty close. Okay, so now this section right here. Let's do this. Let's do the nav. Okay. Let's go back to our uh, CSS here, and let's continue styling up our nav. So, select the header, nav, U-L-L-I-A. So that's a big selector right there. I'm choosing header because there's also a nav in the footer and we want uh, to only select the nav within the header. So we have header, nav, U-L, L-I, and the A tags within the L-I tags. Okay, and those are gonna be display, block, color, white, which is F-F-F. Text decoration, None, font weight, bold, padding, 20 pixels all around, and border left, solid one pixel, 333. Three, three. Save that, refresh, all right, so we're getting there. This looks, uh, this looks better. Uh, this still, that's quite, uh, that's still a little off, so we're going to figure this out here. That's what's happening. Okay. Looks like it's going to need a little bit more padding on the top, and it's in a little bit. So let's go back to our logo, and maybe it's 20 pixels. That's messing that up, so let's do a little dancing here with some CSS. And now we just gotta bring it in. So 17 pixels on the top, zero on the right, 17 pixels on the bottom, and 10 on the left. Let's try that. Ooh, a little too much, maybe five. There we go, that's much better. Looks like there's one pixel here that's uh, a little too far. So let's change these to 16 and see what happens. One more pixel up here, 17 pixels. There we go, that's our logo styles. Oops, there we go. And that's uh, that looks pretty good. So. Um, we're not quite done here. We still have to do these hover styles. So let's add those. Let's go back to our CSS. And let's select this again, but add the pseudo class hover on the A. This means when you hover on the A, this is what will happen. The background is going to change to a lighter gray. Okay, now if we hover over it, there we go. However, there's a little bit more. If you hover and then click, you can see there's a little subtle shadow around the edges. And there's a it fades in very subtly, but it's it kind of fades in. So let's let's add that as well. Same thing, but this time it's active. And we're going to do a little uh, CSS3 awesomeness. So Follow along. I'm going to copy this so I don't have to write it over, out again. Uh, I'm not going to explain in de detail how this works. Let's just uh, let's leave that out for the, for now, and uh, just copy this, and uh, and then you'll get what we're looking for. So now the next one is Moz box shadow paste, and then box shadow paste. Okay, this one WebKit that's for Safari and Chrome. Moz is for Mozilla or Firefox, and box shadow is just uh, kind of a fallback for 
um, I believe WebKit browsers as well. So I'm going to space these in just so it's easier to read. There we go. Save that. Refresh. There you go. There is the active uh, little shadow on the sides. So quick review. We uh, styled up the navigation section um, to make it look a little closer to the design here. Uh, we did the navigation, the hovers, the, the active styles when you click on it. Uh, I know this was a really long video. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Uh, and in the next one, we're going to be focusing on this header section right here. So thanks for hanging in there and I'll see you in the next video.